It is a generally agreed upon fact that music can tell a story, whether it's through a rock song, a soundtrack, or a classical piece. But when we talk about top 40 hits, we often only discuss the lyrics as a means of communicating the narrative. I want to discuss the music. The compositional choices also tell the story of a song, often in parallel with the lyrics. The background music is where the real emotional draw comes from. Music manipulates us in a sense. It makes us feel intense emotions, and often when listening to a song, we don't need to know the lyrics to feel the full effect. The best way for me to explain this is using one specific song. The musical moves that I will discuss are applicable to most other songs, and I'm even going to use other musical examples as I explain. But I would like to have one main focus. The song I have chosen is one of my personal favorites, Impossible Year by Panic at the Disco. It is the closing song on the album Death of a Bachelor. Through the lyrics, lead singer and writer Brendan Urie tells the story of somebody missing another person so much that they can no longer function or feel joy. This song is a dramatic and, to quote Brendan Urie, bittersweet ending to the entire album. The first musical storytelling device that I would like to talk about is the key of the song. The key dictates which notes and chords can be used together. Keys can either be major or minor. The best explanation of major and minor keys comes from Daniel J. Levitin's book, This Is Your Brain on Music. He explains, We hear the major chord as sounding happy and the minor chord as sounding sad or reflective or even exotic. The best way for me to further explain is to actually give you an example because it is something you really need to hear. The song Blackbird by the Beatles is in the major key of G. Singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly. This sounds happy and hopeful. Chase Holfelder transposed this song into a minor key. This is the same line. Blackbird singing in the jet of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. This is the exact same song, yet it sounds darker and hopeless. They tell different stories, even though the lyrics are exactly the same. The song Impossible Year uses both major and minor chords, giving it a dark and sad feeling. This parallels the sad lyrics of the song. There's no sunshine this impossible year. I'm going to bring the ideas of keys back a little later, but I want to move on to chords, a slightly different topic. The chords are the foundation that the song is built on. Levitin explains chords simply as the clusters of notes that form a context and background on which the melody rests. Songs use multiple chords in specific progressions in order to move along. Impossible Year rests on a four chord progression that can easily be heard at the beginning of the song. I'm going to discuss two things pertaining to the chords. The cadences, or resolve, and the consonants or dissonance. In order to understand cadence and resolve, I have to discuss consonants and dissonance first. Consonance happens when two notes that are played at the same time sound pleasing to the ear. The notes are often part of the same chord. Here's an example of consonant notes. Dissonance is the opposite of consonants. Dissonant notes clash when played at the same time and can often make us feel physically uncomfortable. In fact, according to Levitin, we have to build up a tolerance for dissonance throughout our lives. Here is what dissonance sounds like on a piano. Most songs use both consonants and dissonance in order to tell their stories. So how does this apply to Impossible Year, or narrative overall? Impossible Year uses more subtle dissonances throughout the song in order to create a sense of sadness and discomfort. Here is the second verse of the song. There's no good times This impossible year Just a beachfront of bad blood On both of the long notes during the words times and year, there's a subtle dissonance that sounds sad and can give us a physical reaction. They seem more like they are lacking something, or perhaps could work 
better. The music is telling us what to feel the same way that lyrics are telling the sad story. The music tells us that Yuri is sad without the one that he loves. More intense dissonances are present in music throughout our culture. For example, the song The Murder from the film Psycho. It's very dissonant and it makes us feel uncomfortable and scared. But in most popular music, the dissonances are not this obvious. So we can't really figure out why we feel this way until it is pointed out to us. And Impossible Year is not the only sad song that uses this technique. Building off of consonants and dissonances, chords also have resolves or cadences. Dissonant chords want to move to consonant chords in order for the song to sound complete. These ending moves are called cadences or resolves. Entire songs end on cadences, but so do parts of them. When cadences happen on dissonances or certain chords, they sound incomplete. Impossible Year resolves in a manner that seems to just fall short. It doesn't exactly sound incomplete, but it doesn't sound perfect either. The bitter pill I swallow. There are multiple resolves in this section, but they all seem to fall short. The notes themselves are reaching to a resolve that they can never quite get, the same way that Yuri is reaching out for a person that will never be his. The emotions seep into the foundations of the music itself, telling us a story of intense longing that will never stop. Even the ending of the song itself confirms the unending longing. The song never resolves to the chords we want, leaving us with a sad feeling. There's no good times This impossible year We crave a relief from this dissonance that will never come, the same way that Yuri craves a relief from this unending longing. This idea of reaching in music can be found in other places as well. The song Binary Sunset from the Star Wars films does the same thing. It builds to a resolve, but doesn't immediately give it to the listener. The main difference here is that Binary Sunset ends on the resolve that we crave. In this narrative, our main character finds what they're looking for. After all, the heroes in Star Wars do always end up winning. We expect music to resolve itself well, but the real emotional draw comes from the areas where it does the opposite of what we want. As Levitin said, in The setting up and then manipulating of expectations is the heart of music. I want to move back to the keys of the song again. Throughout a song, the key can change. This key change often signals a change in mood. In Impossible Year, the key gets more and more flat as the song progresses. Flats in music are lower and generally have a darker sound to them. The musical opposite is a sharp. Here is an example of an A, an A flat, and an A sharp. So, the addition of more flats make the song sound darker. Just typhoons and monsoons, this impossible year, there's no good time. It also brings out the reaching aspect of the song because of the way that the resolves in the song work. The resolves for each key change would have worked perfectly in the previous key. This is not really something that you would hear, but when it's pointed out to you, it helps tell the story. The composition is telling us that Yuri misses each chance that he gets to feel happiness. Moving past note choice, another important compositional choice in telling the story is the dynamic contrast. 
Dynamics are essentially the volume of what is being played. Generally, the volume of the song does contribute to the narrative. One example is the Jaws theme song. We can tell that the shark is getting closer based on how loud it gets. This is a narrative aspect that mirrors the film. In the case of Impossible Year, the constant crescendo contributes to the reaching feeling throughout the song. The entire song gets louder and louder, but it builds to something that will never come. When we come to the last half of the song, the dynamics truly affect the story. The loudest part of the song is the instrumental solo. This implies that Yuri can't keep up with his own emotions. He has to let the instruments take over and tell the story for him because he can no longer vocalize his pain. This is when the imperfect resolves are most obvious. It maintains the same reaching qualities as before. This makes it the climax of the song as a whole. This immediately transitions to the quietest part of the song. There's no sunshine. There's no you and me. The lyrics at this point of the song are quite dark. But the fact that he is alone is what tells us he will never get to be with the person that he wants to be with. Yuri plays on the dynamic contrast throughout the song to create a sense of hope in the listener. As it grows louder, we feel more hope that it will soon resolve. But when the song suddenly drops in volume, our hope is extinguished along with Yuri's. Moving on to the more stylistic choices for the song, the instrumentation plays a huge role in the narrative of the song. This brings in the idea of timbre. Timbre is a confusing musical concept, but it can be boiled down to anything about a sound that is not the pitch or volume. Timbre, as described by Levitin, is the color of the sound. It's what allows us to tell a ukulele from an electric guitar. These timbres are associative, so the ukulele sounds bright and happy, while the electric guitar sounds stronger-willed, possibly rebellious. As Julian Treasure explained in his TED Talk, music is extremely powerful because it is so associative. We associate each instrument with different narrative and emotional aspects based on their timbre, so instrument choice is extremely important to the overall narrative of the song. It's like choosing a narrator for a novel. They need to fit the tone of the story. Here's one example of how proper narrators can change the narrative. Look, I didn't ask to be any part of this, but here we are. Look, I didn't ask to be part of this, but here we are. They are both saying the same thing, yet they seem like they could be parts of different stories. Using the proper instruments works the exact same way. The big band for Impossible Year is the chosen narrator. Yuri chooses to use a jazz band as the accompaniment for this song. As he said in his interview with Noisy.com, I was trying to do a Sinatra album. Jazz instruments are a real contrast from Panic at the Disco's normal musical stylings. While they tend to be eccentric, they also tend to have an alternative rock style. The fact that the background of Impossible Year is comprised of a full band instead of electronic effects makes it sound more organic and more alive. The low brass paired with the slow tempo gives the song a somber tone. Even before the introduction of the lyrics, we are set up to believe that the song's story is going to be sad. The use of brass instruments and piano specifically is also a narrative choice because brass instruments and pianos decay. The sound itself fades out as it's played. It is impossible to keep playing. The brass gives up, just like the main character of the narrative. The ending is a really cool moment of the piece, too. During the final chord, which is a dissonance, the note slowly transitions from being played by a brass instrument to being played by a mechanical noise. It is no longer organic and alive. Yuri no longer feels anything but numbness. Other songs take advantage of instrumental choice to bring across the narrative as well. Often, film soundtracks associate specific instruments with specific characters. 
top 40 hits are also known to do the same thing. 21 Pilots, in their song Guns for Hands, uses a deceptively happy background to represent the fact that it is difficult to tell if somebody is depressed. This is an upbeat electronic background, so it comes at a shock when you find out that this is actually a song about teen depression and suicide. But it still makes an important narrative point. With the song Impossible Year, Yuri chooses an instrumental narration that matches the tone of the lyrics. He is openly sad, and this shines through because of his choice in instruments. The lyrics of the song do tell the story quite well, but the music is what creates the real emotional ties to the song. The narrative is created by the music itself. Thank you for listening. Cameron Phillips reading quotes from Daniel J. Levitin's novel, This Is Your Brain, on music. Christian Busilkovsky reading quotes from Brendan Urie's interview with Noisy.com titled Still Standing. Credit to Gilbert Smoliak and Tom Culleton for the narration example. Songs used in this podcast in order of appearance were Impossible Year by Panic at the Disco, Gimme Shelter by the Rolling Stones, The Jaws Theme by John Williams, Celloverse by Two Cellos, Blackbird by The Beatles, Blackbird in Minor sung by Chase Holfelder, The Murder by Bernard Herrmann from the film Psycho, Binary Sunset by John Williams from the film Star Wars, We Don't Believe What's on TV by 21 Pilots, Needing Getting by OK Go, New Perspective by Panic at the Disco, and Guns for Hands by 21 Pilots.